Welcome back. You're watching our special coverage here on Modi Meets Trump. We're coming to you live from Washington, D.C. And joining us today is Sanjay Puri, the chairman and founder of USNINPAC. Uh, Sanjay, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Always a pleasure. pleasure. Let's look at the context of this meeting. Bilateral trade between the two countries has more than doubled to about $115 billion in 2016 from about $45.1 billion in 2006. Yes, there is a trade shortfall of about $30.8 billion in 2016, which is up from about about $12.7 billion in 2006. But a lot of momentum, specifically in the last three years, uh, has been achieved and established specifically under Prime Minister Modi and uh, former President Barack Obama. In this first meeting, what then is the expectation? Or, you know, or is there a deliberate attempt to keep this low-key, uh, given the fact that the White House is preoccupied with its own issues? And this is, in a sense, an exploratory meeting for Prime Minister Modi as well. Well, I think, Shireen, uh, what you saw with uh, President Obama and Prime Minister Modi was that the chemistry just was right, right from the beginning. Yeah. And then it built upon it. You know, he had several meetings uh, in D.C., in, in Delhi, and outside. So I think this is where the relationship setting is going to happen. Most of the major powers, uh, leaders of major powers, have already visited here or had some interaction with uh, President Trump, except Mr. Modi. So I think this is where they get to know each other, they feel each other out. Mr. Uh, President Trump is an instinctive mm. leader. Mm. He's a business leader who makes uh, judgment on instinct. Either mm. he likes somebody or he doesn't like mm. somebody. As he says, you know, I think I'll get along with this person mm. or I won't get along with that mm. person. That means either he'll do business with them or he won't. Mm. So this is about making sure that the chemistry is right. So that will, you know, fall down all the way across to trade and many mm. other political mm. relationships. But specifically, how is the diaspora looking at this particular visit, uh, given the political context of what's happening in the U.S.? Well, you've got to also look at what the diaspora is. The majority of the diaspora, uh, not com all of it, but the majority of the diaspora is democratic. Mm. And we had a very hard-fought election in this country. And some of that bitterness is still continuing on because of some of the issues that have happened. So uh, if you look at a lot of the diaspora, probably there is not as much a fondness for Mr. Trump as you would have seen overall. But I think this is not Mr. Trump and Mr. Modi, this is U.S. and India. Mm. Almost to every person in the diaspora, they have a fondness for U.S.-India relationship. Mm. So I think, but I think the administration, uh, the India as well as the diaspora is purposely trying to keep it a little bit low-key because in the light of what has happened in terms of job losses mm. or other things, you don't want to have a foreign leader in front of 20,000 people talk, talking about so India is, first. And which that is really, why no Madison Square repeat. Uh, I think that would be in poor uh, judgment because you, when you have Americans, you know, they'll say, okay, you are basically uh, rejoicing about a foreign leader when, you know, you're supposed to have your loyalties here. And it's not about dual loyalties. So I think you've got to be sensitive to what's happening in this country too. Mm. Speaking of sensitivities and speaking of potential collaboration and opportunities, uh, you know, uh, a lot has happened over the last few years between India and the U.S., even in issues like defense collaboration and so on and so forth. What would you put your money on uh, in terms of forward movement, continuity, uh, perhaps even some announcements this time around? I would say, uh, again, if I were Mr. Modi, I would not be talking about H-1B visa. Yeah. H-1B is a domestic issue about job An immigration losses. immigration issue, yes. It, it's a domestic issue, and you don't want President Trump to go in and talk about immigration in India. Same thing here. Uh, you need to talk about how India can help Mr. Trump achieve a 4% growth. 4% growth can only be achieved if America can get the best and brightest. Today, there are serious shortages of people in Silicon Valley, in Boston, and others. So he should be talking about how can I help you achieve your 4% growth through innovation. And our demographics can fit in there, not about H-1B or others, mm. about how two com countries can collaborate on innovation. So that would be one. I would look at defense, obviously, as a continuing thing. Because even though Mr. Modi has a make in India and U.S. has a, you know, America, America first, great again, uh, yes. uh, et cetera, but there is an opportunity to do some technology transfer which could result in American jobs and Indian jobs. Healthcare is another big opportunity. Last week, President Trump had a huge session about how do we make drugs affordable in this mm. country. A large portion of generic drugs in the world today come from India. Mm. And this would be another big area of collaboration. This is one of his 
hallmark, especially with veterans, providing them cheap medicine. So look at the things that he has promised in his campaign. Mm. Work them one by one and see if there is a synergy there. Mm. And then talk about the jobs that Indian companies are creating. Infosys had an announcement of 10,000 10, people there. Yes. There has been no mention because when you look at uh, leaders from across the world, they come in and they first talk jobs, jobs, jobs. This president right across thinks jobs, jobs, jobs. And if you can't talk that, then his attention span is not as great. Mm. So you're saying Prime Minister Modi should highlight the fact that Indian companies are creating value, Absolutely. wealth and jobs talk in America specifics. and for American companies Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. And talk specifics about the jobs that have been created because then President Trump is going to take that on his Twitter or in his other rallies and talk about the jobs that have been created. Mm. Instead of saying that India and China have been the problems in this whole climate change and other issues. that So you want to always accentuate the positive and look at his domestic promises because he is a president who is working on his domestic mm. political agenda mm. constantly, constantly. Mm. How high up is India on the radar today as far as the Trump administration is concerned? What is your own sense uh, as you sit here in Washington, D.C.? India is a stable democracy. Uh, that's the good news. The bad news is India is a stable democracy. It's not North Korea, it's not Syria, it's not Iran, and on and on and on. But we don't want to be. You don't want to be. But if you notice, there's a constant crisis here in North Korea. There's a constant issue about Iran. There's about shooting down a drone or about Syria. So they are occupied. You can be occupied with mm. one, two, mm. three, four crises. So that is the crisis. Taking the that, bandwidth. The bandwidth of this. So that is the focus. And then there are domestic, mm. domestic uh, issues that mm. this president is facing, which unfortunately every day there's something new that comes in China. Mm. So, uh, you know, in terms of messaging, mm -hmm. uh, one of course was be specific on the wealth, the value, the innovation mm -hmm. uh, capabilities that India is helping with uh, specifically for U.S. companies and for the U.S. What else in terms of messaging should India be putting on the table? Well, how India uh, can play a role, has played a role in the fight against terrorism. Mm. That's again a very, very big thing for uh, President Trump. He's talked about safety, security, etc. India is a role model with the second largest Muslim population in the world. How it has kept ISIS to a large extent out of its borders. Is there a role model? Is there a, a teaching moment mm. for India here for the United States? And I think that's a message that can resonate very well. Mm. What has India done? from, you know, they say radicalization has taken control in Europe mm. and here, etc. But to a large extent, mm. India has done a fantastic job. Do you see support continuing for instance for the NSG? A meeting is planned uh, uh, sometime in, in near future. Do you believe that the Trump administration will take forward the uh, previous Obama administration's point of view as far as the NSG is concerned? I think they will, but in terms of priorities, that is not a priority. They have as I said, they have other priorities, and unfortunately, this administration is becoming driven in some cases by crisis across the board. Uh, that is just a reality. And if you notice, they've walked away from TPP and other uh, agreements. So bilateral would be the way for India also to start mm. talking in some shape, mm. shape about some Ho kind of bilateral. Hopeful of, of uh, a U.S.-India FTA bilateral investment treaty because neither, uh, you know, have have seen even much interest or momentum? I would say uh, investment treaty and even an FTA because this administration is a little bit different than the Obama administration. Yeah. They're not going to start uh, clamping down on labor and other violations in India and environmental challenges, etc., etc. So I would say focus on that with this administration. This administration is going to be much more open and receptive in doing that. Mm. You know, this business of U.S. Congress, uh, uh, Congressman, writing to President Trump on issues of market access or lack of market mm -hmm. access, investment barriers, investment protection, etc., which they believe is unfair. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that that's going to gain any traction in this meeting? Uh, if there are some individual issues that have been brought up by Fortune 500 CEOs, that will be brought up by President Trump because he's been on a listening tour every week with CEOs. But I don't see that as a big issue. President Trump understands India is a big, he's a businessman. He's got investments in India. India is a big opportunity. So he understands that there can be American jobs created if there is business done in India. So I think 
he's not going to be focused as much on that. What is the expectation in terms of messaging from the Trump administration on dealing with Pakistan specifically? Because this is an issue that India would like the U.S. to take a, a hard stance on. Uh, what is your own expectation? I think he's going to talk about terrorism. He's going to talk about ISIS. I think he's going to talk about uh, working together with India in terms of clamping down uh, on those kinds of things. Uh, getting too much into the weeds in this first interaction, mm. I think, is not uh, something that India should be pushing on or getting so into the specifics. Because you just want to start off with the relation. This is not the first time they're going to meet. There are going to be many, many more interactions. The G20 is coming up. And other interactions are going to be coming up. So I would say focus on positive, focus on where he gets some, President Trump gets some wins, Prime Minister Modi gets some wins back in India, uh, create that kind of an environment. Well, Sanjay, thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18 and taking us through what your expectations are of the Modi-Trump meeting. Appreciate your time as always. Thank With you. that, it is time for us to take a break. But when we return, we continue our conversations here live from Washington, D.C. You're watching our special coverage. Stay right there.